Turn to uh, First Peter, chapter two. <clears throat> this is the second class on um, whatever the name of this class is. Something about starting a ministry. <clears throat> Yeah, how to raise up a ministry. And, the, and <clears throat> again, these are principles that we're using that really apply across the board. I mean, there's so many different things that you'll be involved in that these things will come in handy. And honestly, you will be glad that you know some of these uh, because it's going to make a difference. In 1 Peter 2, verse, uh, let's read verse 25. For ye were as sheep going astray, but now are returned to the shepherd and bishop of your souls. And here, um, this is not Jesus just shepherding us in general, but shepherding our souls because they get off. Um, many of you may know this, but maybe not everybody in here knows this. <clears throat> the, word, the word pastor is the same word for shepherd. It's exactly the same word in the Greek. Okay, so that's a good thing to know because um, I, think th I think we've changed it into pastor, but really what it has to do is leading people and using the term shepherd as sheep. Okay, so there is that reality. Now, one of the things that is real important that number one you know and number two that you try to communicate to people <clears throat> is that um, the person who is leading for example if you're over a youth group or you're over whatever a, a church or you know any capacity the person who is leading if they are God appointed they see the big picture Usually God gives you some form of vision as to what to do or how to do it or how to carry out the ministry. In other words, you've heard from God, and that's important. You need to be, you know, obviously that would be real important, hear from God. But I would assume that most of you are mature enough that that's going to take place. But there is this reality that uh, the shepherd or the leader in the sense of he who's leading people in the Lord in a direction, the shepherd sees the big picture and the sheep see more of a smaller picture pertaining to where they are at personally. Okay, can you see how that is the case? The, the, the picture that the Lord gave me would be if there was a shepherd and he's standing on the side of the hill and here's all of these sheep that are all around him He's looking around, and he sees the big picture. I mean, he's looking for a wolf coming through those woods over there, or he's looking for, you know, just the right place. You know, he's got, he, he's, he's got a sensitivity to a larger picture that I don't, I don't think any sheep is kind of going, well, we better, you know, keep an eye out, you know. For the, I'll be the, what, you heard of a meerkats, anybody? Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a sentinel. And that sentinel, he stands there, and everybody else is doing stuff, and he's like this. And, and it's true of uh, their, probably their kin, which is uh, um, uh, not gophers. What are we called? Ground prairie dogs. Prairie dogs. They have a sentinel. And, um, <clears throat> and so what, what the deal is is that's his job. And the rest of them are doing their thing, and if they get word, then <laughs> And you ought to see it happen. There's a bunch of prairie dogs out in West Texas. And you go through there, you can see them, man. <clears throat> but uh, no meerkats, but prairie dogs. Um, and so uh, the, uh, the shepherd, uh, you know, if you go by Psalm, 120, or Psalm 23, he leads beside still waters. He re leads into green pastures. He leads into the valley of the shadow of death. All of those things, and, and you have to remember, there are under shepherds, and then Jesus is the great shepherd of the sheep. Amen? He's the good shepherd. He's the one that's over the whole thing. And uh, as long as you're staying in tune with the Lord when it comes to leading, 
then he'll let you know when, you know, when it's going to be green pastures, when it's going to be still waters, when it's going to be the valley of the shadow of death. This is, this is more his leading as we hear and we follow him. But, but a, shepherd, a shepherd is like a sheep to the great shepherd. They're really functioning in the same thing as sheep do to the under shepherd. I mean, it's it's really the truth. It's not always the case, but spiritually, it sh that's that's the picture. That's the way it should be. Paul said, "Follow me while I follow Christ." You know, um, in other words, he's saying, "I've got I've got a shepherd over me as I lead." Um, he's in tune with that, <clears throat> and so the Lord communicates His heart to you how to proceed, where to go, when to do things. All of those are important, not just, not just what. We're always, most Christians are just trying to figure out what. You know, for example, Moses. Moses says, okay, what do you want me to do? He sees this, this uh, Egyptian beating this Jew, so he goes over there and he kills the Egyptian. Oh, well, that's the Lord. <laughs> no. And so, of course, it all messes up and it sets everything back 40 years. Okay, so timing is a big thing, too. You want the will of God, you want the timing of God, and you want to do it in the spirit of the Lord. These are all important factors. <clears throat> um, but if, a, if an under-shepherd leads to a certain, let's say a certain valley, maybe rolling hills around and stuff, He's, he has come there because he feels that's where the Lord has directed, okay? Now, let's, let's get down to the crux of the matter. The, sh the shepherd is going to have the big picture. The sheep are not going to have the big picture. So when the flock comes there, they may have arrived at the, the big valley. They may have arrived at the place God wants. But you've got a sheep over here, and let's say he, he's standing in fire ants. Okay? But it, that one's not, and that one not, and that one not, and that one, and that one, and blah, 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 they're not. We've come to the place that the Lord has led us, but that one's having a hard time. And maybe rightly so, but the, but the whole thing is all that one sheep can see is think of a sheep, think of what he pretty much does all day long, has his head down, he's. All he knows is what that little area that surrounds him. Right? And the shepherd, he's led to the right place. You know, maybe everybody had, you know, maybe the shepherd needs to say, get out of the ant bed. You know. I mean, it, you know, it could be that simple. But the, the deal is, is that sheep may not, you know, sheep, uh, I've been told this over and over and over by farmers who take care of sheep. Sheep are not very smart. In fact, I'm told over and over they're dumb. I hear that all the time. I heard it recently. I forget where. Somebody told me that, and he was a farmer. <clears throat> okay, well, compared to Jesus, we're all dumb. Amen? Amen. But uh, that, that sheep may be sitting there, and he's, he's being, you know, eat up when all he's got to do is adjust a little bit. Find the adjustment. But usually, here's what that sheep says. This is the wrong place. For everybody, this is the wrong place. This couldn't be God. You getting it? I see this over and over. Um, it's, it's uh, and now let me build on that by designating different sheep in different areas. I'm gonna use the, the youth group thing. Uh, if a youth group leader has a vision from God and they feel like they've heard from God and they, and of course, let me tell you something. Their whole point then is going to be, I need to follow God, what I've heard from God. If they're, if they're worth anything, <laughs> they're going to say, I've got to do what God's called me to do. Okay. But here's always the case, whether it's youth group or anything else, but we're using an example of youth group. Within the sheep, you're going to have somebody who leans toward prayer. You're going to have somebody who leans toward evangelism. You're going to have somebody who leans toward music. 
you're going to have somebody he, who leans toward games. You understand what I'm, you know? You know what I'm saying. You're going to have somebody. And so here's the deal. Here's what, here's what you deal with when you have the big picture and they only have their little area. They're going to say, um, this, this youth group, we don't pray enough. This needs to be about prayer. And you're trying to follow the Lord with what God's given you, and people are pulling on you left and right, trying to do what? Well, you can say trying to get you to do their particular leaning. But basically, it's trying to get you off of what God called you to do. And you better stick with it, because I promise you this, you will fail if you get off of what God called you to do. It'll all end. There's no need for it to continue on. God will shut it down. Okay? You might as well know that. Because, and, and uh, that has been um, one of the strongest things that I've faced in almost 40 years now is that people are always trying to get you to move over here or move into that or do that. And they don't know. They, uh, again, before I say that, this person who is leaning into prayer, this one over here says, man, we've got to get out on the streets. We've got to do this and we've got to herald the message. We've got to get, well, that's okay. It, both of those are okay. Can I get an amen on that? There's nothing wrong with that. It's just what? What is the problem? They don't see the big picture. That's the key. They don't see the big picture. The shepherd does. But here's the other problem. They don't know there's a big picture. <laughs> they don't. Why? Because all they see is what they see. That's the big picture to them. So, you know, your task, should you choose it, your mission, should you accept it, is you have to try your best to communicate to people that God has given you a big picture and they are added to that to do their part. Okay? I'm telling you that is so huge and it'll make a difference if you can do that. If you can get that established, it'll save you a lot of pain. Okay? Don't be messing with my van. Pain. And you will experience pain. You will, if, you know, with many of these things, if you don't get the ground covered, this is what's going to happen. All right. So, well, you know, you don't just have a prayer sheep and a witnessing sheep. You've got the music sheep. Well, this thing, we need to gather together on Saturday nights and just have a big band and, and lights and smoke machines and, you know, uh, you know, there, there you have it. And we need to just rock the house, you know. And, and here's the explanation for that. This will draw in all the kids. And this is going to be hard. I, we're talking about youth group. This is true of any area. If you're just catering to their flesh and their leanings, folks, that... You hadn't got anything. They're already there. <laughs> you know, you need to get them to the Lord. You need to get them established in the Lord. Okay. But the big picture, it's going to include times of prayer, won't it? Won't it? And it's going gonna, it's gonna to need outreach. Because if you just take in and never give out, you're going to die there. For kids like that, you need music. For most churches, if you're talking about pastoring a new church, raising up a church, you need to have good worship music. But you can't let any of those things be the central focus. Christ must be the central focus. And you, that's something you can never let go of. And it's so easy to in modern Christianity today because there are so many things vying for your, you know, and they'll tell you, you know, They'll, they'll send you all kind of stuff. You want an exciting, you know, youth group? You want a lot of kids in your youth group? Here's what you got to do. If it doesn't mention Jesus at all, 
I would say, walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. <laughs> Bleeding over again, <laughs> but right? I would say, look, the, you know, uh, probably who wrote that brochure and wo worked up that particular side of the program, whether it be prayer, witnessing, music, that's their leaning and they probably broke away from the church because it didn't focus primarily on their leaning and started a parachurch ministry. Do you know what a parachurch ministry is? It's not out of a church. It is breaks with the church and says, I'll start my own ministry. Okay, well, you know, you, you can believe whatever you want to about that. I'll just say... You know, I believe the church is the ground and the foundation upon which God does everything. And so I believe it has to be out from, uh, I say, I believe it has to be. I believe that that's God's intention. Now, you can do whatever you want. But many times the reason why these things form is because they don't have the big picture. They have their picture. And their picture, and if, if only they could see, I have a part, and it's important. And just to be honest with you, as a leader, it'll be your responsibility to let them know that they have a part, and it's important. Every member is important. Every part is important. <clears throat> now, if they have a part, and it's not Jesus... You know, I mean, there are, there, are, I've, there are people who feel they are called to be fruit inspectors. I don't see that anywhere in the Word of God in the sense of the way they do it. You know, they, they want to come in and they want to check everybody and they go, okay, your fruit's sort of soggy and your fruit's, you know, uh, unripe and, you know, you don't even have no fruit. And, you know, and that's their whole deal is to critique and criticize everybody and everything. That, folks, that's not a ministry. Their place is not important. <laughs> if that's their place, I'm, I'm not being mean. You know, I'm telling you the truth. That's not a ministry of the body of Christ. That's not a member carrying out their ministry. Chief fruit inspector. Sorry? <sighs> that's, praise God. He said it's the accuser of the brethren, and in many cases it really is. And let me just say this, let me just add this. Every one of you here, if you try to start a ministry, you might as well introduce yourself to the accuser of the brethren because he's going to show up in somebody. Okay? Every one of you. It's amazing how he can always find available vessels. You know, but he can. And you will be grieved. You will be messed with. You will be taunted. The, I'm not, you, you say, brother, don't, don't prophesy that kind of stuff. <laughs> Got news for you. God's dealing with it. It says that he stands before the throne day and night accusing the brethren. He's having to deal with it. You say, well, my ministry will be better than God. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Strike one. So, you know, I just, I'm just telling you, you might as well be prepared for that because that kind of stuff happens. <clears throat> um, I don't even know if you remember this, Josiah, but we had a meeting recently in my office, and Josiah was the spokesman. And when he started off, he said, he said in his very opening words, he said something like this: um, "Well, I want to talk. We want to talk about this right here." And he said, "I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a big picture." And then he said, "In fact, I know there is. I don't know what it is." Do you remember saying that? <laughs> and I thought, "Holy cow!" That's, that's, what? that kid's dynamite. <laughs> that rabbit's dynamite. I thought, 
you know, that's, that's incredible to be honestly that young and to realize that, look, we're presenting something here, but there really is a big picture, and I don't even claim to know it all, uh, but I'd like to present this because there always is. If you're a part of something, and now if you're leading it, there, you probably see the big picture. Hopefully. hopefully. And hopefully you're following Jesus like a sheep does a shepherd. Because why? No need expecting people to follow you if you're not going to follow Jesus. If you, you know, and, you know, and you're going to, part of the problem that the devil does with the, all the accusing and stuff is that you get picked on too, just to let you know. You'll get picked on. And most of us, that will hurt. And, and it, here's why it'll hurt. Because you know for a fact that you are not perfectly conformed to the image of Christ. You have not reached ancient of days status. You're going to know that. And the enemy will find the specific thing where it hurts. And he will hit you hard. He'll hit you with everything he's got. Okay. That's why we preach the rest of this about the cross and being in Christ. Because it'll found you against that. Because you're going to need something. Because it is powerful. Yes. Right. Absolutely. He's the one doing it from the Father. He's too faithful to be his father or he can deal and use your life. And if you're so bound up in one that it's Christ for you on, then when people start picking on you and you've gone through all these steps and people listen, my ministry is about me, my credentials about me, I'm certified by the Father through the revelation of his son, and it's his son in me that is carrying forth this ministry beside him. He'd be too foolish. I am not qualified. He is my qualification. Amen. Then Right. But if it's the son, and that's what we have to have Jesus reveal to us Amen. before we go into ministry. That's it's right. got to be Jesus, Amen. or we won't make it. Amen. Amen. I remember one time <clears throat> we were going down to uh, Mardi Gras to minister on the streets. <clears throat> there was a bunch of van loads of us. I don't know, you know, four or five. We pulled up to the church probably, I don't know what time it was, 12, 1 o'clock. It seemed late to me. It was dark. We were tired. We'd been traveling all day. Got out of the van. Usually I was, you know, I wasn't the leader of those things. Uh, however, if something ever came up, I was the leader. But, you know. And uh, so Jim would get out of the van, him and <clears throat> Pat, Dolan, and whoever else, and they'd go check out stuff. And Jim come running back and said, uh, well, they, you know, I hate to tell you this, but... Uh, uh, the pastor of the church that we're staying at here, they have a guy in this room over here that needs deliverance. And he's just chock full of demons. And he's like, you know, going crazy. And all of a sudden, we heard a window break. And uh, oh, by the way, he's a black belt in karate. <laughs> and uh, big old fella. His, his, it's probably his leg. His leg was as big around as my torso. Yeah, he's a big old dude. So Jim told me that, and I went, let's go deal with it, because it's not based on our power. Anyway, but uh, there were several of us in the room, and we're all dealing with the enemy and casting out the devil and doing all this kind of stuff, and, and uh, the enemy in this guy starts hand-picking different ones who are doing the deliverance and knew what certain areas to pick on people. You know, we all just come from Dallas, you know, down in New Orleans. How did he know? But he knew. And so he'd say, you know, you, you, da, 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 this and that. And the person would just like turn white and almost, you know, like, how do we deal with it? You know, I mean, I, I'm not worthy to, you know, because they'd point out faults and stuff. And then another person, another person, and this and that. <clears throat> 
And uh, not everybody was affected, but some were affected. It was clearly hitting home and going, oh man, you know, I, you know, it'd be like saying this, oh, the devil's right, <laughs> you know. But what we're saying is, well, that's right, I'm a mess, and I, you know, all this. <laughs> he came to me, and here, here was his line to me, you're not a son of God. I just laughed. I said, you picked the wrong one for this, baby. You're coming out in the name of Jesus. Anyway, my point is the enemy knows your weaknesses and stuff. And whether it's through that kind of deal or the accuser of the brethren where somebody says something. And, and I'll just say this right now. You need to be aware of this. You are in worse times now than when I was your age. And here's why. The internet wasn't around when I was in Bible school. And cell phones weren't around and texting and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> all one person has to do is not like you and go online and post anything they want. They can say anything they want. Did you know that? They can say anything they want. And you can't do anything about it. And they can keep that thing up there for your whole life. All right. So here's the deal. Don't make anybody mad. <laughs> That's not the answer. I'm just teasing. But you, you, know, you will make somebody mad. I, I remember, this has been so long ago, most of you won't remember, but I'm going to go ahead and say his first name. Anybody remember a guy named Earl? Thank God. This guy came to our church. He was only here two or three times. I didn't even remember meeting the guy. He left. I got a letter like four months later that just ripped me. I mean, from one end to the other. And I'm going, Deb, do you remember Earl guy? <laughs> <laughs> I've still got the letter. I, I've got all of the bad letters I've ever. <laughs> I have. I've saved every one of them. And I, from time to time, I read them to humble myself and remind me, you know, you need to just stay low and stay, you know. But I mean, some of them are pretty bad. But this one was one that was just, you ruined my life. You did this and that. You did that. And I'm, th I'm going, Deb, I don't even remember us doing anything other than having regular church. <laughs> she said, I barely, re you know, she remembers everybody. I barely remember the guy coming. <clears throat> Whatever. The enemy, I, what, I don't know. You can be assured that somebody is just going to get upset with you. And they are going to say stuff. And whether they put it online or not, I mean, nowadays you can spread stuff just like that. It's just, it's terrible. I, I, I really think that all of you should be praying, not just for your future ministry, but for everybody else, because the way that things are set up now, it's just too easy to bring down. And, you know, people say, here's the average person. They say, well, I'm going to get on the Internet and look this person up. Well, you're not going to go on the internet and find a big thing on me, from me, about me, saying, oh, I'm really a good guy, and, you know, I mean, you know, you know I'm not going to justify myself. I'm going to ask, you know, I'm going to say, Lord, the ones that have an open heart to you and feel led of you, let them be joined. And if not, this is a great thing. It'll chase off people. There'll be trouble later. <laughs> I mean, there is some truth to that. You know that? There, there is. There is some truth to that. But we don't like that. Why? Because we all want to be liked. We all do. We all want to be liked. We want everybody to like us. We don't want, to, want anybody upset with us and whatever. And I, that was, I hated confrontation. And I hated the fact that somebody didn't like me. I'm okay now. I'm okay now. As long as I believe my father likes me and that I'm in the will of God, let them go. Let them say what they want. Let them do what they want to do. I'm staying with the Lord. Because why? In your case, when, if God used you to raise up a ministry, when you stand before the Lord, all you really want to hear is, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You know what I mean? That's, that's what you want to hear from him. You know? And if he's okay, you know, and the thing that keeps me is I'm continually seeing this reality of being in Christ and of being crucified and all of this. 
And I keep thinking, this is the mind of God. This is what he wrote in the word. This is the truth as it is in Jesus. This will endure through all eternity. This needs to be my mind. I need to get over stuff. I need to get over it. I need to quit fussing with it and letting it mess with me. Once you begin to do that, there's freedom of being with the family, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and whoever else God adds to you. Now, let me just say this also. <clears throat> you are going to think over, once you've been at it, say, 10 years, you're going to think that you have a lot of people in your corner and that like you and like your ministry. Okay? I mean, this, I'm t why am I telling you these things? Because almost everything I'm saying you will face. You will face this stuff. You're going to think every, you know, that you've got a lot of people and that all that work that you've done for 10 years has really built up a, uh, a hedge, yeah, and a peanut gallery that's on your side. <coughs> uh, guess what? It only takes one little thing, and you'll be surprised how many people will turn on you. I'm, I, I'm just... But how many gigantic churches just like that. Just like that. Mm -hmm. and, and so you just need to realize, and this, you're not going to do this till the Lord works it in you, but maybe it'll help you down the road. Maybe the Spirit of God will bring this stuff to your remembrance. Here's what you need to work on. Finding only those that God adds to you. Remember Jesus said, all that the Father hath given me, I've lost none except the son of perdition. Okay, well, he only had 12. In his, you know, that was his mind. I only got 12. If we were in that place, we'd say, look at these multitudes. Look at all these people that are with me and following my ministry and all this stuff. And they, guess what? Did they turn against Jesus? Yeah. Crucify him, crucify him, okay? And they'll yell that over you, too. You're saying, Brother, I ain't even going to go in the ministry after taking this class. <laughs> well, you, you need to count the cost. You need to count the cost because there is a cost. You know, it's, it's not, you know, the Red Sea opens, you get on the other side, you sing, it closes up, and then people can't find and they don't have anything to drink and they blame you and want to kill you. Okay. So you just need to be aware. Now, why do you do it then? For the Father. You've been called. It's the life of Christ in you that is glorifying the Father. That's why you do it. You don't do it for man, and you certainly don't do it for the rewards, <laughs> at least not in this earth. <laughs> <clears throat> well, you, it will. You know, there's, there's just no question about it. I've seen too many people that they wanted to go in the ministry. They thought it'd be cool. They were moved by some minister they saw or something. And it was disaster, you know. I've seen a lot of uh, mix-up, too. I've seen uh, prophets try to become pastors. David Wilkerson. That's right. David Wilkerson, when he first started that church in New York, he preached every Sunday morning, and he beat the fool out of those people <laughs> because of the prophetic word that he would give. I've seen um, evangelists try to become pastors. And... Uh, you just it just doesn't work <clears throat> but being a but now let's forget the word pastor and just think of the term shepherd following Jesus and leading people into what Jesus is telling you as long as what he's telling you is the Lord and from the Lord then you have to do that that's that's I mean I, you know I'm sort of stuck if he hadn't called me to preach I got no other talents I wouldn't have I wouldn't have made it. God blessed me by calling me to preach. That's all I can do. But some people, they can do all sorts of stuff. You need to make sure the only thing that counts is you hear from God and you're going to follow God. Okay. Now, uh, let, me, you know, let me make sure that we, because we've covered a lot of little things here and there. This thing of the big picture versus individual sheep seeing their area. 
Uh, let me just give you a few other examples. One example would be uh, if you had a four, uh, four year old toddler that wants to, you know, that sees your shiny new, you know, 38 special loaded and they want to play with it. Okay. You know, maybe they grab the handle, you know, start pulling it toward them. You grab it and you say, no. And they go, why? I like it. It's shiny. It looks so cool, you know. And, you know. And, uh, and they start crying when you take it away because they don't understand. They don't understand. And you're not going to be able to explain it to someone that's that young. Hopefully, if they're a little older, you can explain. But when they're that young, they don't get it. They don't get there's a big picture. I try to talk to my dog, there's a big picture. My, my new dog is four months old, Rocky. He doesn't get it. <laughs> he doesn't get it. We got a whole family here, we got a life here, we got stuff, other stuff going on. I just want to be with you and be petted, you know. And, and he don't get, I mean, just like I'll, I'll be sitting there reading the word outside and he'll be sitting over there, you know, just at my feet and he, you know, his head down and I'm sitting here reading the word and his little brown eyes, he looks up, you know, and looks up at me. You know, he don't have a clue what I'm doing. You know, his explanation of what I'm doing would be ridiculous. <laughs> right? It would be absolutely, well, that's kind of us trying to explain what God's doing with the big, big picture. Amen. We don't get it. Right. We're just a dog that loves him, you know. Oh, just love you, you know. Just look my way for a minute, you know. <clears throat> just as sweet as he can be, but he just doesn't know it. He doesn't know what's going on. So um, you, you have a parent that's uh, got a teenager. And they say, uh, uh, I want to go with all the kids down to Clear Creek and hang out. We're going to build a bonfire. Does that sound too real? It, it is. <laughs> um, you can try to explain, but they're not really going to understand. Do you know that? They're going to think that you're, you're too strict, too old, too strict, too something. They're going to think something. When, I, when my kids were teenagers, what I would do is I would say, they would come and tell me in advance, and I'd say, let me pray about it. And I would pray about it. And I would pray, Lord, show me what is your will. And when they came to me, I didn't say, well, I think it might be dangerous, or I think there might be too, you know, too many kids, or it's too late, or what are you going to be doing, or da-da-da-da, you, you know, all the things. I would just say, if, if I heard, I would say, the Lord told me no. The Lord told me no. Okay. That doesn't work with everybody. Christians youth, uh, Bible school, church, the Lord told me this. Well, the Lord didn't tell me. Yeah, that's true. Well, there's your teenager right there. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? There's your teenager. Well, the Lord didn't tell me. Well, maybe the Lord isn't going to tell you. Maybe he's going to tell the one with the big picture. You see? So you're going to be facing this stuff, and people, you are going to have to deal with these sorts of things. <clears throat> um, just a final picture here. Uh, I remember sharing this four or five years ago. <clears throat> I think it was up in Ohio. Um, the picture we've been talking about is a shepherd and sheep. <clears throat> and Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. It says this, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Or another way to translate that is, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. Well, what does that mean? Well, to a, to a lamb, it means you can run and frolic 
chase butterflies and chase them into the woods if necessary. Go chase them all the way down to the edge of the cliff. Sorry, what? Yeah, there you go. Uh, to, to, you can, you know, to, uh, to the teenage sheep, it means that you can go hang out with the other teenage sheep over right on the far edge away from everybody else, right next to the wolf lair in the woods. They don't know there's a wolf lair there. They don't know that. You do because you're a shepherd, but they don't. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lie. I, and that's a carte blanche, blank check, says I can do anything I want. <clears throat> All right, you ready for the real meaning? Israel was an agricultural nature, and a, a nation, and I don't just mean um, wheat and stuff, I mean farm animals and what have you. <clears throat> They, uh, they were specifically shepherds. Did you know that? You don't really hear a lot of cattle ranchers in Israel. They were primarily shepherds, okay? And why were they shepherds? Well, because in their <clears throat> religion, they were continually offering up sheep, right? Solomon on one day offered, what, 200,000 sheep? I mean, it was an incredible number, just incredible on one day, you know. And so David lives in that society, and he's a good shepherd. What does that mean? It means that he's raising every one of those lambs and every one of those sheep for the day that it will be offered to the Lord. Well, that is it. That's that's absolutely it. We see we see we see a shepherd in um, Ireland. They have sh a lot of sheep over there, and we go, oh, look at the sheep on the fields, and look at this, and you know, oh, you know, a good shepherd. Here's here's modern day good shepherd. Modern day good shepherd. A good shepherd will make everybody happy and do everything that they want them to happen. So you can not accuse. You won't have to accuse them of lack. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. My shepherd will provide everything so I don't lack. David was a good, good shepherd in the sense that he conformed to the Lord. And he said, I, I can see it. I'm sorry, I'm drawing my own picture here. I can see him talking to the sheep that he's raising for his father. <clears throat> All of you are being prepared to be offered unto God. Every one of you, little guys, big guys, you know, all of you are being prepared to be offered. There will come a day where you will give your life for Jesus. What I'm doing is I'm not letting you do this or that. The restrictions I put are simply to train you so that when that day comes, you don't run in the other direction, that you glorify God and that you come to that altar and you lay down your life. And so... So I am a good shepherd in that I am preparing you through all that I do and all of my leadings and every direction that I take so that you learn to be self-giving, so that you learn to, to, to not fear the altar, so that you, you run to the altar instead of away from it. Is that, I mean, uh, that's so... That is. It's so incredibly true that it is undeniable. <laughs> so the New Testament, we read the one in Peter and, <clears throat> and all this. He's the shepherd of our souls. And it is our soul that says, well, I want this. Well, I don't want that. Right? Well, he shepherds our soul. And he says, look, your purpose is to give yourself on the cross, on the altar. Your purpose is to do that. That's what you live for. I, I created you and joined you to this flock for that purpose. I'm talking about David's, you know. That's, that's why you're joined to this nation. This is what we do. <laughs> Does that make sense? This is, what, this is what we do. And so every input, everything, all of it is designed to prepare those because... You know, uh, if they didn't know that, 
then they would be in the little sheepfold, you know, I am the good shepherd, the shepherd of the sheep, my sheep know my voice. Well, if he calls an individual sheep, he goes, you over there in the corner, you're chosen, come. Come unto me. Where's he heading? Down to the tabernacle. Down to the altar. You've been chosen. Oh, I've been chosen. I'm special. I'm more special than all of you. I'm, I'm so happy. Oh, where are we going? What's, what's that bloody altar over there? This ain't, this ain't what I was planning on. I thought I was going to be the head dude. You know? No, no. If you, if, if you start a ministry, and you don't instill that in people, it's going to be ugly. You're going to find dissension and division. You're going to find, you know, lambs that want to go that way and sheep that want to go that way. None of them in the image of Christ. You remember he divides the sheep from the goats? You know, the goats butt. You know how I know that? Because I in Jamaica... I had to take care of, for two years being a missionary there, I had to take care of, one of the things I took care of was the goats. And they butt everything. You don't bend over in front of them picking up something. They will come up and bam, man. They'll, you know, you know. The sheep primarily won't do that. But here's, here's how spiritual goats. But, but, they're butting too. But, but, you know, that's a goat. But the sheep, they know his voice. They know him. They know who? Well, he is the shepherd, but on that throne, he's not the good shepherd, is he? He's the lamb that was slain. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. Folks, he doesn't have to wait... Um, uh, until the end of time, if you will, to start that separating. Amen. It's already in process. Amen. That's right. It's already in process. It just is. It is. It's out of my hands. It's out of your hands. It is in the hands, the nail-scarred hands of the one who raised up a nation and raised up a nation of shepherds and said, here's your purpose. Train them, prepare them to give their life. Amen. That's it. So, again, you can, you can avoid um, in the future, you can, when, when the Lord starts raising up a ministry, you can avoid communicating that because if you do, a lot of people are going to leave. But if you keep them around and you try to do anything, when you want to go that way, God, listen to this, God tells you to go that way, they're going to want to go that way. And there's nothing more frustrating or heartbreaking when you're trying your best to follow Jesus and everybody else is going in another direction. Nothing more heartbreaking. You'd, you'd be better off just filtering it down to a few that have that same heart and go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jesus looked back. Well, I got 11 anyway. You know, I got 11. And those 11, you know, don't think you have to have a big youth group or don't think you have to have a big church or a big, you know, don't think that it has to be that. Don't think that. You're foolish. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. Gather in the real ones who have that heart and go, and you can, you can just keep going and keep going. They'll, eventually there'll be problems, yes, and this and that. And this is my, I'm ending right here. But the problems you'll have will be the problems of the kingdom, not the problems of carnal Christianity. There's a huge difference between the problems of carnal Christianity and the problems of the kingdom. I'll, I'll take any of the problems of the kingdom any day any day because you've got purpose behind it the other you know 
It's like the rich young ruler. You know, give, give away everything, come follow me. Well, we can use this stuff. <laughs> and Jesus said, nope, ain't going to happen then. You're not ready to forsake all. You're not ready to be a, a, a sheep. And it says, he went away sad. And, but it says Jesus was sad, and, but he loved him. Do you know that? It says that about him. But Jesus loved him. You gotta love that shepherd. His heart's right. Father, we just ask you to uh, quicken these things in the day when they're needed for each one who aspires to be your hands, your feet, your servants, your body, your leaders, however you want to word it, Father, whatever capacity. But they are yours, and Lord, continue to guide me to impart things that will strengthen them and will prepare them, will help their eyes to constantly be fixed on you. And Lord, things, let things come out of my mouth that will be stored up in them at the right time that can save them, Lord, from a lot of pain and agony that they could learn from my mistakes or other people's mistakes and not have to make the same ones. Father, we trust you and we trust your calling. We trust your faithfulness to keep us till the day of Christ. And so, Father, we put it now in your hands. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're dismissed.